Hi everyone, let's chat about 3D printed mouse droids. So this mouse droid here is completely 3D printed. We've got uh, a shell on the top and then we've got a base. So all of the, the greeblies that you see here, uh, this is all printed in the PLA Plus. Uh, let's have a little look at the base next. So this is the base. This is also 3D printed in PLA Plus, except for the tires on the wheels that you see here. That's TPU Ninja Flex. And um, inside here, you will see that there's a radio control car. So this is one of the, the things about the mouse droid that makes it a relatively straightforward build. Uh, this car, it just drops into this base, into this frame using these crossbars here, using four screws. So there's four screws that actually come out of the original radio control car. Um, and then you just put some slightly longer screws in to hold this in place. So this is a Traxxas Bandit, it's a readily available RC car and the holes that are here are all sized perfectly to fit. So it really is a case of once you've finished actually doing all the printing and uh, the sanding, you just drop the RC car into, into place and, and, and off you go. But there's even a cradle here as well, this is optional, and this has actually been sized to fit one of these Acre speakers. So you charge these up, this one actually takes an SD card, uh, there's some sand loops that are readily available, you pop it on there, hit play, put it in. I'm not gonna hit play for the video because it's it's pretty annoying after a while, as a lot of people uh, uh, will tell you. So, okay, so, so the 3D printed parts um, that make up uh, the, this droid, they'll all fit onto a Prusa Mark III. And they'll all, they all snap together, we'll come to that in a moment. Um, but the, the whole thing snaps together, uh, you, you then use uh, epoxy glue to glue it together, and then you finish it in a normal way. So, uh, I think as I've done in a previous video, car filler for any large gaps, um, knife it on, sand it back, and then when you think you've got a fairly decent finish with that, then you move to good old spray putty, a few coats of that. I don't actually use very much of this. Um, probably, I only ever really use about three or four coats. I make sure it's dry, sand it back a little bit before uh, I put another coat on and get a nice smooth finish. And then once it is smooth and I've worked up to a kind of 240 grit paper or so, then I'd look to finish it off with uh, uh, an acrylic paint. I use high coat car paint, matte black. Uh, is my go to and I think it looks you know, pretty good. Oh, and the other thing actually is I did put a lacquer coat on the top of this, which it does protect it. It did have a slight kind of grain quality to it, so I wasn't, I'm not entirely sure. I guess it did protect it. I'm, I'm not quite sure about the look of it. It was a very hot day when I applied it, so that probably kind of dried too quickly. So, right, a little bit of history. Okay, so, um, so the reason why I actually decided to make uh, a mouse droid was that I'd actually finished 3D printing my full-size droid, Astromech C2B5. And what I wanted was a, a simpler project um, that I could just kind of relax into. Uh, also, especially something without electronics. So that was the main driver behind this. And I'd heard uh, a rumor that there were these 3D files out there on the internet, you could just download them, hit print, you're good to go. That wasn't quite the case. So when I actually started pulling these files in from uh, various different places, none of them really kind of matched each other. So anyway, long story short, I pulled all the files into Blender, scaled them all so that they looked kind of about right, uh, and then actually chopped them up. So let's just put the mouse droid to one side for a moment. Let's come back to these clips that I mentioned earlier. So what it is, I, um, and I've got into doing this with projects, is I, when it comes to actually gluing and sanding, I like the least amount of effort. I'd rather put a bit of effort in designing it up front. So what I did is I, I chopped up the, the mouse droid after it was designed into these little parts here, and I kind of made up a clip system. So I've got these little tiny clips here. This is all PLA plus. The idea with these is that they, they just sort of slot in, so they don't kind of snap in, but when you get two of these pieces alongside each other, let me just uh, put these in place. Hope you can see this, okay? So you just put the clip in like that, and then put another clip in like this. Once you've got these in, it, it's, it's loose. Yeah, you, this is not the, the finished article, but it, it holds it in place enough that you could you could test it. You could uh, certainly add glue to it. So uh, I'm not a big fan of using clamps on projects. And the idea with this is that you can just snap the whole thing together, add some glue. I even had this actually driving around. Uh, there goes my clips falling. I even had this driving around without any glue whatsoever. And it was fine until it hit like a tiny bump in the carpet and then the whole thing kind of fell apart. But the idea with this is to make it a really easy build to go together. Okay, so um, so the end result is a kit, yeah? A kit that I'm kind of thinking anybody could have a go at actually downloading, printing it, much easier 
than let's say some of the you can do you can build mouse toys in any number of different ways but i wanted to avoid all this kind of manual cutting of holes and so on you know i just really wanted something that can print and then just sort of slot it onto the rc card so the files for all uh for all of this uh, are available on thingiverse i'm kind of hoping that maybe in the comments uh, down there that a link might be uh, added um help us out uh, the uh, the files in thingiverse there's a description which also includes all the various kind of screws and bolts that you need okay and it's worth just touching on that because if you really have a little look i don't know if you can actually see it on the inside of here but you see there's lots of these bolts here okay so all of these various pieces the green glues especially these top ones here they're all held in place not they're not glued on they're held in place with bolts and the reason for that is that uh, this thing really does go quite quickly there's a little control on here that you can press to pick three speeds and even at its lowest speed which i would heartily advise it still moves very quickly. It's a lot of fun, but it's only a matter of time before those greasings get snapped off. So I try to design the whole thing as modular as possible. So like if the bumper goes, which is like this thing here, okay, that's great. Just print another one, maybe even keep a spare. I, I do actually keep a spare of those top three glues with me. Take the bolts out, put another one in, and you're good to go, okay. So, right, so the design is a couple of years old now, and I really enjoyed putting it together at the time. Um, I really enjoyed building it, and it's uh, it's a good exercise if you want to do a project where you want to get a bit of practice with sanding, finishing, but you're a bit scared, as I was, still am, I think, actually, of the electronic side of, of droid projects, because it's just an RC card, you just bop it, keep the battery charged, and you're good. So um, I think it's good for that. It's Maybe I do things a little bit differently now, and there's some interesting designs coming from Michael Badley. I'd certainly advise you to check him out. He's working on much more accurate uh, uh, Greedleys, especially for a mouse droid. Um, so th it's a two-year-old design. It probably still stands up. It's it's it robust. It will kind of get you doing a lot of sanding, okay, but maybe not as much as a full-size astromech. It's a really good first project because you don't have to worry about electronics. And I know electronics really turns a lot of people off. I know sanding does as well, but the matter of the fact is, if you're going to 3D print you're going to need to do some sanding and this is good practice because if you make a mistake on any of these parts maybe it's not the whole droid maybe it's only a small part so you can kind of make a mistake and bin it uh, and then just do a reprint when you've maybe not invested as much so um, the last thing i would say is mouse droids are a huge amount of fun okay they're really portable so if you go into a venue maybe a charity event and you've not got quite enough space maybe in your car maybe you can easily transport one of these i've got a big kit bag that there's just about squeezes inside of they're a lot of fun at a venue. They do go really quick, even on that low speed. So you're going to need clear space. And maybe you need to practice a little bit before you go. Uh, you're going to run into people's ankles. So you need to, well, I'm trying not to run into people's ankles, but you need to bear that in mind. But they are huge amounts of fun. They're instantly recognisable as part of the Star Wars universe. And you, really, you need to get an anchor and put a sand loop on here because members of the public think it's great. But if you hang around with a bunch of let's say stormtroopers for the, the whole day, it will drive them absolutely potty at the first couple of hours. So you should definitely, definitely do this. Okay, so build one uh, and uh, good luck.